Hi everyone, it's Christy, and today I'm going to show you how to do a fun project. I have these two samples here. This is a dragonfly, and this is the heart. So what I did, I uh, did a cutout, uh, like on this one, the cutout heart, and I used that same heart as an embellishment on the gourd. So today we're going to do the exact same thing, but instead we're going to be doing it on an oak leaf. So I'm going to show you how to do that next. This is a four inch mini gourd. And the first thing you want to do, you want to select the pattern that you want to use. I'm going to be using uh, an oak leaf from the Leafs pack, a stick and burn pack. And I'm just going to peel it off. And I'm just going to stick it on in the center. And once you're happy where it is, you just want to smooth it out. Okay, actually that's a little bit too low for my taste, so the good thing about stick and burn is that you can just peel it off and reposition it. So I'm just going to look at my gourd, it's going to be easier for me to attach it. There we go. Okay, and I like the way that looks, so now I'm going to go ahead and smooth it out. Okay, once I have my stick and burn on. I'm going to be using the Gordmaster Pro Carver and the Gordmaster Fill a Point Burr. And I want to turn on my carver and use it all the way up to high. And I'm just going to cut out this leaf following, of course, the outline design. So, how you want to use this fill a point, you just want to go in, drill in, and follow the line. So I'm going to go in and just follow the design. As you can see, you can feel when you pierce the gourd all the way through and that's where you want to stop and start dragging your burr. I don't want to go in too deep with my fill -up point because I don't want it to jump on me. So I, I tend to uh, use the the tip of the bird so it's easier to control. So I'm just going to pull it out carefully. I don't want it to break. I, when I mean break, I don't want my stem part of the gourd piece to break. So now I can just peel off my stick and burn. And there you go. I got my cut out. Mm -hmm. Okay, the first thing I want to do, um, as you can see, the gourd is dirty from the inside. There's all that membrane um, and the seeds. So I just want to get as much out as possible, so I'm just going to grab my trash can and dump that out. Okay, once I have all that out, I can go ahead and use my mini micro cleaner ball. This is the half inch size, and when you're using the cleaner ball, I'm going to go ahead and turn on my carver. Uh, I'm just going to go up on the speed, but I don't want it to vibrate. When, when, the moment I feel that it's vibrating, I want to go down. So right now I have it around a medium. I don't want to go any higher because then it starts vibrating on me and that can cause the shaft on um, the micro cleaner ball to bend. So like I said, I'm using it on medium speed and I'm just going to go ahead and using the side of the ball, I'm just going in and cleaning the inside. You just have to be very careful that when you're cleaning, you don't bring the cleaner ball close to the edges of your cutout because you can break it. So the best thing you can do is turn it off when turn off, turn it off when it's inside, and then stick it out because I don't want it. I don't want to accidentally just break off uh, part of my cutout. And now I'm going to clean off the edges. I'm just going to be super careful and use it at a, at a low speed. And when I'm using it, again, I'm using my, the side of my cleaner ball. 
and I just have to be very gentle and be careful, especially on those sharp edges, that I don't press on them or any or bring it forward because then that can break it off. So I'm going to go ahead, turn it on. And do you see how gentle I'm just like using the side of it and cleaning off my edges. Okay, now that I cleaned the inside with my micro cleaner ball, it's all done and clean. Um, it's optional. I'm going to leave this one natural. The other ones I did paint with the black gourd paint, but this one I want to I want to leave it natural. So I'm just going to leave it as is, and I'm going to continue on. I'm going to set this aside. Now I'm going to grab my cutout, and you can see I still have the stick and burn on it, and I'm just going to peel it off. Now I'm going to clean the back of it and I'm going to use again the micro cleaner ball and the Gordmaster Pro Carver at a low speed and like I mentioned earlier I'm just using the side of the ball and I'm just removing all that debris. Okay, now that it's clean, I'm going to go back to my carver and I'm going to use the fill a point. And this time I'm using the fill a point burr to etch the veins on the leaf. So I'm going to freehand those. I'm going to turn it up to high. And I'm going to start first, I'm just going to hold it from the sides because I do notice that uh, stem is a little thin and I don't want to break it. And using the side, of the fill point. I'm going to go up a little bit higher. Like that, I'm just going to make a straight line. So now I etch my design and I'm ready to add color. Before I start painting, I'm going to use Formula 49 to condition my cutout. And the reason I'm conditioning it is so my uh, transparent acrylics blend better. And now I'm going to dry it with the heat tool. and I'm slightly drying it. I still want it to be a little bit moist so um, it takes those colors nicely. Okay, and today I'm gonna use uh, the Transparent Acrylic Cordovan, True Red, Poppy, and Goldenrod. And I'm just gonna pour one drop of each on my mixing palette. They're very concentrated, so a little goes a long way. So I don't need much. Just a tiny little drop. I am adding more drops of the goldenrod, since I tend to use more yellow um, when I do leaves. So I'm just gonna move these aside. Now I'm gonna use a fine micro brush and I'm also gonna use the Easy Grip applicator holder so it's easier for me to hold. Okay, so now I'm using the goldenrod 
and I'm just applying it randomly on the leaf. So now I'm going to grab the poppy and just randomly apply it. I want to go ahead and add a little bit of red. This is the true red. And I'm just going to add a little bit on the tips. And now I'm going to grab the cordovan color and I'm adding it right here on the tips, on the edges. Right at the center. Okay, now that that's done, I'm now going to use um, a cotton swab and I'm just going to dab away excess. Now, okay, now that I'm happy with my colors, I want to go ahead and heat set them. You know that the colors are dry because they turn, they turn dull. They lose their shine. But once I seal the color, that uh, rich, richness, vibrant color is going to come right back. Now the colors are sealed, I sealed it off camera, and now that it's ready, I'm going to go ahead and attach it to my cord. For that, I'm going to be using a tiny little eye screw, but first I want to determine where um, I want this embellishment, this cutout, to hang. If I want it on this side, or if I want it on that side, to know where I want to put this eye screw. I kind of like it right there, because it's forming into the gourd. Um, I kind of want to, I want to stay away from the stem, like I said, because it came out a little thin. So I want to make sure I do it on, on the side since it's a little bit thicker and there's more support and I don't want to break off that stem. So I'm going to put it right there on that side. With my carver turned off, I'm going to make an initial pilot hole. So that way it's easier to put on my um, ice group. And now using the eye screw, I'm just going in and you just want to twist. There we go, till it's all the way in. Okay. I kind of want it, I want it sideways there. Okay, perfect. Now that it's in, I'm going to be using the maroon wax linen and just threading it through. Cut this out. And now I want to determine the height that I want it. I like it right there. So I'm just going to make a knot. 
and tighten it up. I'm going to do a double knot so it's nice steady. There we go. And now I just want to cut off that excess. There we go. And it's that easy.